Hey guys, welcome back. You might have seen my little short earlier on. I've had a new parcel coming through the door yesterday actually, courtesy of Zero Zero Robotics. And um, as you can see, I haven't undone it yet, so I'm going to do this unboxing live and we'll see what's going to be in there. I guess we can guess already what's likely going to be in here. Bearing in mind that you've seen already my um, Hover Air X1 Pro Max review, a beta testing videos, I should say, for a while. However, this is going to be exciting. So, first unveil of the box, and I guess what I do is I get all the various bits and pieces out. So let's start here. This is the power case for the Pro, Pro Max. I'll show you the back side as well quickly. Put that here. Then we have the multifunctional carry bag for the Hover Air. Again, as well, it's quite big, and then a bit of padding, put the box on the side now. We've got the, I guess, what probably is going to be the beacon in its case. So, I suppose let me start with the multifunctional K bag. Nice looking box. Let's get this out. Okay, that speaks to me already. Quality. So it's zipped together, but I guess for people who want to use this for their outdoor adventures on their bikes, you can actually unzip that bag and probably put it in your, I guess, handlebar. There's some attachments here, some velcros. I'm going to leave that undone for a moment. And then let's see what's inside. Oh, so there's lots of things inside. First of all, we've got the handlebar mount. Same thing. And we got, ah, we got a magnetic clip for the beacon. And we also got a magnetic adapter mount for the beacon. It says for the beacon, yep, so that looks like that. We'll have a look at those in a minute. And inside the case, there is a couple of, I don't know if you can see that in the light here, a couple of additional pockets, which is nice. I guess one is for the beacon, one might be for the remote. And then, oh, there's another box. So this is probably the bit for the case where you can put in the power case then, or I guess the hover itself. But then we also got the ND filters here, which is interesting. I'm going to comment a little bit on those later. Let's then take a look at the, maybe first at the power case actually because that's an interesting part of the hover. So that's all still sealed. Don't know, I'll try to do that quite carefully. So I like keeping my boxes nice and tidy and undamaged if I can. Okay, so let's get this out. Sucker box, nicely wrapped. There's a bit of a manual that might come in handy a little bit later and then here I guess is the, oh, this one, is the power case wow that that I mean that in itself really speaks quality um let's have a look if we can undo that remember first time I'm doing it oh, okay so once we have done that, here is the strap for the power case and it says hover on it. That's very nice in itself. Power case, 
Um, there is a charging port here. I don't know if you can see that. That's USB C. There is the. I guess this is where the strap then goes. This is very nicely cut. And the founder of uh, Zero Zero Robotics actually is giving a one of his videos, an industry tour, where he discusses the case and the manufacturing um, process. Then here, uh, I'll try that out later in a separate video, but here's the connector that pulls out, I think, and then connects into the USB-C plug of the Pro and the Pro Max. Here's the removal tool because that's quite tricky, but it's nice that all the tools, everything is very compact within the case. And if I switch this case on, let's see, it's probably not charged. Oh, actually, yeah, so it's it's charged, it's coming on. Uh, that is quite nice. I don't know if you can see it, so I've got three lights here. And I suppose if I put the Pro Max into the case with that charging connector here attached then it, it would charge when it's being shut and I guess the idea is for certain scenarios you'd like to have the hover air pro and pro max always switched on so switch it on put it in the case shut the lid it charges you get the display here you will also then see if the omni turner feature is on for instance because I guess the idea is it's always ready you carry it with you when you skiing or when you're out and about and you open it up take the hover air out get it straight airborne and there's no waiting time whatsoever although i should say from my own testing with the omni time flying feature i didn't actually have to wait very long um that you know few seconds 15 seconds 20 sometimes 25 seconds and then the omni time comes on so i guess most of you will be interested in what's in this little case and again a lot of wrapping so i've got two charging cables here so this is usb-c to usb-c and this one is usb-c to iphone ios plug a little quick start guide for the beacon and joystick bearing in mind i haven't looked at any of that so maybe i should so obviously i don't want to break it then this little thing, I guess, with the screen is the beacon. Let's see. I don't know. I switched it on. Maybe here. Let's press the button. Let's see what I'm, oh, actually, it's got a button here on the side. So if I press this, the question is, is it charged? Maybe not. It's, ah, something, it's doing something. It's actually vibrating. So it comes on. says hover. And I guess it's looking then for the hover drone to connect. That's nice. And then I've got two pieces of joystick here. Here's one. And here is two. That's already coming up with some charging lights. And I also believe there is some, yeah, so there's some joystick sticks in here in a piece of foam. There is longer sticks that are a little bit thicker and there is shorter sticks that are obviously a bit shorter. So I know people have different preferences for the length of the control stick. I'll stick with the short ones now and I guess you have to somehow, yeah, so you have to basically push them on here. There's a little metal pin in here let's see if this works Ugh. I'm gonna break it obviously first time I'm using it so I'm a little bit careful okay so that stick went on I don't know if you can see that and then I get the other second short stick as well and by the way in the case I can see here take this out this is quite nicely done so you got uh, little loops here that would also hold in the sticks when you take them out with you. I guess that's quite nice. So let's put that other little stick also into the joystick. And then let's see how this connects. So 
Um, there's only one way to connect this because you've got these, I think it's 10 pins here and 10 pins there. So you click that in and it connects, brilliant. Then you got these side pins here. That's uh, six, well, three and three on each side. So click that in here. Can't really go any any way along. And then I think what the idea is, I've seen Rick doing that. Let's see. Oh yeah, so you pull this out and pull it down. You pull this out and pu pull it down. Let's see. It's obviously, oh, it's okay, so they are now connected and they the click in so they're quite tight you can still see on the display here it's looking for the hover i haven't done this bit yet and then i suppose the idea is you get your mobile phone and you click that on here and basically you have got a complete remote control with two two joysticks Screen here, screen there. I think the idea is once this is switched on and you've got big screen, then this screen goes off. But also if you're using just the beacon by itself, then you would be using the beacon screen. And I think, if I remember rightly, so let's take the mobile phone back off. By the way, some people have asked if they can put all sorts of phones in. It looks to me this, if you compare that, in here oh, that's come loose just just to show you um, there's actually plenty of room plenty of gapping here so even with a pretty solid case oops music come on we don't want that so even with a pretty solid case you should be able to get this all in so then you can obviously disconnect it, and I believe it's also possible. I certainly have seen a video somewhere. I don't know if it's this way around or the other way around, maybe that way around. I think it's possible also to control the uh, Pro and Pro Max just with one joystick, because obviously you've got some, got some functionality here. You've got some function buttons here for sure. So I guess up, down, left, right, yo, and so on. And you got a home button which would suggest to me there is some sort of a return to home feature which is enabled by the beacon i guess when you use that by the way this feels really really solid so this isn't cheap plastic at all this is this is i don't know what it's made out of but this is really good material so very solid stuff here and i look forward to using these because obviously that expands the um flight envelope and operational reach of the hover quite a bit. So let's see what I've shown you. I've shown you the beacon and joysticks, briefly at least, and obviously I will test all this out in the field. And then I think what that leaves us with is the bike mount, which uh, Rick has also tested already. Okay, so I guess you put that around the handlebar and hook it in which is very nice then you've got this sort of gopro mount on here which you can first of all you can turn it around and we can attach additional stuff to it that's great what have we then we've got a magnetic adapter presumably for the bike mount so you could put oh yeah so basically it's got a tripod screw here i think that's a quarter inch screw and it's got these these flaps that you can flap up and you could attach it to the mount here so you can very quickly get this on your bike off your bike and presumably let's see how this could work obviously i haven't read any of the manuals yet so somehow i think oh yeah so i guess yeah so here we go I think this just clicks in, so it clicks in like this. This is the beacon bit now. And you attach it on the handlebar of your bike with with this holder. And I suppose the idea is, need to read up on this and ask the guys from Zero Zero Robotics. I think the idea is that the Pro and Pro Max then basically will follow you around. Very nicely done. It's, once it's 
clicked on is actually very, very, very solid sitting on there. Um, and then finally, what else have we got? So we've got, this is a magnetic clip for the beacon. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so brilliant. You can also put the beacon on here and you can clip it on your coat, on your clothing. I know some people have asked for that, but, but once again, once it's attached to you, the idea is that the hover Pro or Pro Max will follow you around, presumably similar to what some of the other drones, I think it's Skydio 2, someone mentioned on Facebook previously have done. Very, very nice, very compact. Ooh, comes across very stable, but at the same time, not overly heavy. So it's a bit heavier than a, uh, than a sort of uh, microphone, external microphone you would attach to yourself. Solid material, nice screen here. Have to see if I can get a screen protector. Maybe, I think it's at, is it? I think, I'm not sure if it's a touch screen or not. Might not be, we'll need to try this out. Also, it could be that I still need to have to do a firmware update first uh, before I can actually use that. I suspect that might be the case. And then finally, what also comes in the box is this set of, I think, Rickset four SD, sorry, not SD, ND filters. Very nicely packed as well. Hover, you've done a really great job here. This is a lovely solid case. And yeah, basically it's an ND8, ND16, ND32, and ND64. And some of the other beta testers early on suggested that they do not actually mount magnetically to the front of the hover um, Pro and Pro Max, they actually slide in, which means once you slip them in, there's no chance really that you should lose them unless you pull them back out and pull the other cover or another of the ND filters in. So that should greatly improve further the quality of the videos coming out of the um, Hover AX1 Pro and Pro Max. And I really look forward to now to, well, test all this new stuff out. These accessories are amazing. Actually, you see, for instance, I haven't seen that earlier on. There's actually a wheel on here as well. I don't know if you see that. I don't know what that's for. I suspect that's probably a wheel, could be here, so underneath. That must be a wheel for the gimbal, once you're using that to control the Pro Max with. And I'm just looking here, so that, that's a stick. That's a stick with a wheel. Um, so the sticks are different. You need to charge all these separately, I think. Just looking if they've got charging ports. Must have, yeah, so there's USB-C charging ports on here. And then the, the beacon part, which I believe you can use by itself, but also in connection with the joysticks. Now, the exciting thing for me is, and I think I mentioned this before, I love my X1. And in fact, I have two because I use it for um, educational stuff. I work with colleges and universities, training them on drones and AI. And as part of that, I got uh, two X1s when they first came out. And I really look forward to using them still. And I believe, um, I mean, over here, you can correct me, zero, zero robotics if I'm wrong. But I believe that the beacon and the joysticks will also be working for the, um, the the first one, the Hover Air X1.